Welcome to the Monster Hunter Podcast Show. It's episode 21 for the 8th of January 2011. Hi and welcome to the Monster Hunter Podcast. I'm Christian from Game Design Reviews. Hey everyone, this is Social Dissonance, also known as Shepard from YouTube. And I'm Nick Malone, I'm from uh, BeforeGameDesign.com. And we are three Monster Hunter enthusiasts who decided to come together on a weekly basis to just discuss strategies and share our experience. And today we have an exciting episode with plenty of news and surprises. For once we have a super exclusive guest. Today with us is none other than Mr. Brady Gamer himself, uh, Michael Abbott. Hi, Michael. It's, it's so nice to have you with us. Thanks, Christian. It's nice to be here. So um, I don't know how what what the overlap is between our audience and and your audience. So um, maybe you can explain to our listeners or our like, actually our our, our um, I don't know our watchers on YouTube uh, also um, what um, what Brainy Gamer is about. Well, uh, Brainy Gamer started three years ago, uh, I guess almost three and a half years ago now, um, and my intention was to build a site that would uh, attract an audience where we could have thoughtful conversation about games and uh, you know, a safe place to uh, be able to, to talk about games without hopefully too many trolls and too many angry, gnarly people. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, I think pretty much we've done that. Um, I post about three posts a week or so, and I also do a podcast. Um, and I, I especially enjoy engaging in conversations with people who read my posts, and um, I enjoy the community of gamers. It's sort of the whole thing for me, really, is just being part of this community and helping to contribute a little bit, whatever I can. Uh, you still do the uh, Vintage Game Club, right? Yes, I, I host the Vintage Game Club with Dan Bruno and David Carlton, uh, and we're we've taken a little break for the holidays and with uh, you know trying to get through some games that we're all playing, but we're always playing a game over there, usually more than one, and uh, yeah, people are welcome to come on over there and check that out too. We play older games. Uh, for us, vintage can be you know even a two year old game could be vintage. For us, uh, it's more about interesting quality games than like how old the game is hmm. i must say for me it's really exciting to have you here on, on a podcast because um you're actually one of the reasons why i started playing monster hunter at all <laughs> um i always re read your blog and i always find your your insights in in you know, game analysis um so so uh, inspiring and one day i saw you posting about monster hunter and it was um, around the time where monster hunter came out in europe and so, you know, it was kind of like an inspiration also for me. It contributed to, um, to my, me having this epiphany that it might be an interesting game to, to look into. And, and it was really interesting to, you know, playing the game and, and reading also your blog posts um, because you, you posted a couple of blog posts about Monster Hunter and reading them side by side um, of playing the game and kind of comparing my experience to your. I think you, you, you nailed down a couple of very important aspects of what, what this Monster Hunter experience is about. And we can talk about it um, when we go on the quest um, uh, in a minute, because one of the new, um, uh, well, the new changes in the podcast right now is that we're also playing in Monster Hunter Try today. So um, actually, I managed to move uh, from the uh, EU servers into the US servers, and we are all, we can be all together in, in Monster Hunter Try today. So uh, what are the monsters who um, we are going to fight today? Well, we have at least the first two nailed down, and if we have the third one uh, up from one of us, it's the, the first quest we're going to do is going to do a Kuro Peko, because I believe, Michael, you had in a really interesting post on the Kuro Peko in terms of how his behavior is kind of something that's usually a lot more involved than what you see in, in other games, uh, in terms of its ability to bring in other monsters and, and have different abilities throughout the actual fight. Yeah, I hated that creature for a long time. <laughs> well, we're going to destroy him, um, I, I'm assuming. <laughs> so at least the four of us, and actually, I think it's really interesting that the four of us all uh, independently selected different weapons here. Uh, there's actually no 
repeats at all. So that's actually kind of kind of cool. Um, I was thinking we do the Kuro Pekko. Uh, I think the Gobul might be kind of fun. He's also kind of like a really hard guy, but also uh, really fun when you get some strategy involved. And then I think Nick was saying that we should go ahead and maybe give the quest uh, Jump Four Jaggies a try. It's like kind of like a bonus quest at the end. And uh, we can probably get a lot of questions done during that time, at least. Yeah, yeah, because it's a, a, a longer quest, and it's actually quite quite easy to to play because we are fighting only um, only j great jaggies. Yeah, so, I think Kuro Peko does show up at some point, though. If we want to have a, a second chance at revenge. All right. So we are have all selected a quest, and we can we can get into it. Yeah, I'm trying to use mostly level appropriate stuff here. You could have a Ludra hammer at this point in alloy armor, uh, but we're not going to hold ourselves to too strict of a standard. Yeah, and by the way, we also uh, realized that this is going to be the sick cast. Uh, basically, uh, well, mo I think mo mostly uh, all of us are, are sick today, or at least were sick in the recent time. Horribly <laughs> ill. <laughs> yeah. Terribly, terribly ill. <laughs> Ever since the uh, the end of the last podcast, I've been extremely sick. I, I, I'm only feeling well when I do the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see, I mean, it's probably because we lost to Tigrex. I mean, it's it's certainly it destroyed us emotionally, and and, <laughs> and I, I was I was really devastated. Bad. Yeah. Well, we lost to Plesioth. Well, no, it was Tigrex first, and then we lost to Plesioth. Yeah, and, I, and people in the comments also suggested that we were we are down talking Plesioth um, so much, and um, you know, Plesioth just took revenge on us. You know, don't mess with the Ples. He's mad. <laughs> <laughs> He's horrible. Okay, so um, this this first fight is going to be Kuropeko, and I think Michael, a lot of players are agreeing with you. You know, this is this is a really an, a very annoying creature. <laughs> and I, when I posted that, I was. A relatively new player i actually still am i'm only level 10 yeah so i think when pe people write about games they often write about them from the perspective of you know a lot of experience and being a real veteran and if you look at those posts i'm I'm still a relatively new player when i wrote those and i think that sort of informed my point of view is you know how does it feel to play this game when you're kind of overpowered by these monsters mm -hmm. and uh, it's half the fun, really. Yeah, but kind of the experience you wrote about is basically the, the uh, a monster hunt experience at every step of the way. You know, unless you're maybe at some point you're very very far ahead. You know that every new monster you encounter is this new new huge overwhelming challenge, and um, the game is about figuring out how to how to um, overcome this challenge. Yeah, definitely, and you know it it's for me the game was a huge surprise. Uh, I'd never played a game like it. So, I mean, for me, it was just a tremendous, tremendous experience of uh, learning how to play a multiplayer game on the Wii that, you know, I never, I mean, I didn't even know that the Wii had multiplayer games. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is really the only one of its kind. I mean, there's nothing yeah. that even comes close to this experience. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, think the overwhelming a... sense of fear is what I enjoy the most. <laughs> Or would I use? I mean, I not you know I don't really have it as much as I used to, but you know uh, my my real experience with Monster Hunter began with Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, and I didn't oh, have anybody man. to play with, and so like I had to solo my way through the entire game. And whenever you went up to a new rank and had had a new monster to fight, like it was just terrifying. But yeah, like, you had no game, idea what to expect. Yeah. And that game really resets its difficulty every single level. You're just like, oh god, I have to do all that. It, oh, it, yeah. I, the sense of fear that I had the first time I fought a Tigrex in that game I don't think, the only other time I've ever felt that amount of fear is the first time Devil Joe shows up <laughs> in, in high rank you're just kind of well, like, what, who's that guy? why did I just die? Uh, well, I'm thinking like, uh, Tigrex is worse than Devil Joe, he is really scary like, not, not so much anymore in, in Portable 3rd because there are ways to get around him but in Unite, like the way those hitboxes work, like, if he's coming at you, like, you're going to get hurt. And you're going to get hurt really badly. Okay, i got to be careful. I don't want to launch anyone. Yeah, so we've we found Kuropeko. He's in, in Area 5 right now, and we all gathered around him, and we are trying to, uh, to uh, well, to hit him, actually. I think Kuropeko is, is design-wise, it's, it's such a good choice for, for, um, um, for oh, I'm, I'm sorry, hey, buddy. Um, <laughs> um, he's such a good cho a design oh, for, sorry, for, uh, for early months. Hey, no worries. He's I gotta tell you, it's been so long since I played this game. It feels so good to hit this thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and especially oh. if, if, right like like this when he's paralyzed and, and you can, yeah. can kind of can, can move <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah. 
Yeah, but you know, he's, he's kind of has this like very cheerful, very, very um, crazy design, so it, it, it isn't quite as uh, terrifying at first. But he is so annoying. <laughs> oh, sorry, Shepard. <laughs> yeah, that's alright, man. That's I cool. have watched him, I think, three different times. <laughs> uh, I like it. Uh, well, what's cool about him is he's a monster that scales in difficulty really well. Yes. Because when you do get to high rank, he starts sending out Devil Joe, which is probably one of the most horrifying abilities any monster in this game could ever have, is the ability to bring that guy into the fight. And it gets is, worse, Nick. Is there, another monster? is there another monster that has more character and uh, love than Devil Joe? Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, certainly he's the most visually dynamic monster that's ever existed in Monster Hunter, because like, he changes so much throughout the fight. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, one of these days, uh, Brainy Gamer will have to get you to Devil Joe level so you can enjoy the... Uh, <laughs> oh, I love that. He's just such a dynamic monster. He has so much character. You know <laughs> he's angry. You know when he's hungry. He's just, you know when things are about to go wrong. And, and you also know when he's aroused. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. It the is same could be for you, Nick. I forget how do you not how do you stop crouching? I can't remember the command for that. Oh, uh, uh, a. Uh, a? Well, no, when you don't, if B. you don't have your weapon out, press B. Yeah, yeah. it's just B. It's the okay. same same uh, same uh, button you press for for crouching. Revenge. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Oh, okay. This is also. The, this drooling mechanic is still the most amazing thing I think I've seen. Uh, it's such a weird idea for a game. Like, well, what if the monsters are drooling? Yeah, yeah. So we're basically we're uh, we're doing quite well with Kuropeko right now, and Kuropeko's drooling. So that means kind of he's exhausted, right? Yeah. He uh, they slow down their their attacks. Does their attack power go down? Uh, their attack power doesn't go down, but their some attacks will begin to fail. And they become much more susceptible to certain uh, different like items, like uh, flash bombs and traps will have extended durations. Yeah, I, I noticed that the thing, the thing with the traps that really helps. So uh, it's always um, sometimes a good idea to, if you have any traps with you, to just um, um, you know keep them uh, keep them tucked away and wait until the monster is exhausted and use them when when you see that the he's is exhausted because you will get so much more out of your traps this way. So wow! Oh, this Kurpeko, we are destroying this this guy. I mean, we're really taking revenge on him. Revenge! <laughs> oh, revenge! <laughs> <laughs> there we go. He he finally. Oh, fell. that's it. That's it. You, you know, uh, I mean, I was uh, I read your article on, on the Kurpeko, and I I thought you know it's really um, I I read the article actually before I fought the Kurpeko. So uh, when I first fought the Kurpeko in this game, I was terrified. I, w I had I was I was really really genuinely terrified. I, I had problems with the great Jaggy already because I, I wasn't so accustomed to controls yet. I have I had really you know struggling with Jaggy, and then I saw Kropeka and he did all these tricks. You know you know uh, sometimes he's flying in the air and I can't hit him. I don't know if I'm what I'm doing right. Sometimes he's uh, spewing mucus. Sometimes he's calling in <laughs> other monsters, and I already have yeah. troubles with one monster. You know. <laughs> well, it's interesting too because don't you think he 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 has personality he's he's a pompous monster yes you know he ha he actually has personality and it affects your your attitude about him because he he puts his chest out you know and he's he's very defiant and then just when you think you've got him he flies away and taunts you and yeah 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 definitely and i find it's, it's, it's such a great design for a monster um if you compare it to other monsters uh from other monster hunter games like i think the equivalent in monster hunter freedom unite would be the um uh, katku uh, Yin Garuga, I think, has probably this similar personality. But yeah, Kaku. Yeah, uh, it's kind of you know, it's it's kind of hard to tell because there's no like direct equivalent. But but um, you know, it really shows you that that Monster Hunter Trial really brought so much new ideas into Monster Hunter. Like it, it really fleshed out the character, the characters of the monsters themselves. So they're really uh, unique and and uh, you know they distinguish each other from each other. They have great animations too. I was surprised uh, early on. There, I don't. I wouldn't begin to know how many animations they would have typically for each one, but there are enough of them that when you confront a new one, you don't see the same thing over and over. Mm. Definitely, yes. So, yep. no matter how many, uh, no matter how many times you uh, you fight a monster, uh, you could start fighting one. 
not completely used to it. You know, you've been fighting him for forever, and suddenly this monster just surprises you and stomps you down for no apparent reason. Yeah. So, I'll host a meal if you want, guys. Oh, okay. Okay. If you haven't eaten yet. Oh, uh, on my way. I think Michael is still still uh, sifting through his uh, through his I'm awards. Returning. Yes, I am. <laughs> I, I leveled up, guys. I leveled oh, wow, up. Wow! Wow! Woo-hoo! Awesome. Um, I was thinking. I mean, seeing as we did that one so quickly, do we want to do uh, a bear off as well? Well, let let's see. Uh, let's just see what what the time says when when we're through with it. Okay. Uh, when we do, all right, so we'll do the go bull next. In your menus, when you do to the meal thing, go to <clears throat> mooch a meal. Okay, meals mooch a meal. Yeah, and if you're all yeah, you're all mooching. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see, polishers, specialists. I'm just so excited. And and never mooched a meal yet. <laughs> oh well, here Apparently, you go. This this little dance means I'm mooching a meal. Yes. <laughs> I think I'll I think I'll give us all uh, I'll give us all defender. That works. Mmm. Look at that! Yeah, Look man. how big that oh, meal is. Om nom 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 nom. Let's see. What do right. we get? Do we get bomb? I want the bombs. Ah, wow. oh. uh, nice. But is so we do we want to do the we'll do the global next then. Um, yes, we can do the global. Why not? Okay. Well, then I want to switch my gear just a little bit because he's not really weak to blue draw paws. Mm. Uh, what should I'm, I use on him? I, I'm doing something I've never done, and that's using the sword and shield on a gobble. Oh, that sounds fun. It's not a little crazy. So, so Michael, have you ever fought the global yet? No, I have not. Oh, this is going to be a, a first one. Well, global is actually, and that's quite interesting because global, uh, that, that the first time we were playing try on this podcast. Um, uh, so the global is actually one of the monsters that was, um, that um, well, it's kind of a new type of monster for the monster to try, I guess, because you fight him underwater, which is kind of like the distinguishing distinguishing characteristic of monster to try. Yeah, I love the underwater stuff. Nick, Nick, did we? I don't think we we fought one, did we? When when we played I, months ago, I, that was with uh, is it the video games and human value and initiative? Is that? I can't remember. I can't um, remember. I think I can't remember if we did or not. Yeah, uh, I I, knew it doesn't. That Roger and them were probably not high enough to fight. Yeah, them, so I doubt we did. I do remember chasing a. A monster underwater, and he's very wily, and he he chooses new areas and stuff like that. Mm-hmm, so yeah. maybe maybe, maybe. maybe I'll, I'll maybe. know when I see him. I'll know when I see him. If I have a visceral reaction, you'll know that I've <laughs> fought. I, I'm pretty sure we're going to do fine. We're going to fish him out first. So uh, who who's going to pack the frog? Oh, so I got it. a bunch of frogs. Does anybody have perception on? Uh, perception. Yes, I have perception. I th- no, I have a perception on my old uh, equ- equipment. Um, this doesn't have any perception. Uh, I can I can equip that real fast. Let's um let's answer a question while I do that because it's going to take me a couple seconds. Yeah, sure. Um, so we have a couple of questions. Um, here's a um, here's a question from a guy called Devil Bob. He's uh, asking us if you're using a hammer and you knock out a monster. Uh, if you hit the monster in the head while it is knocked out, does the knockout damage count towards the next knockout? Um, I was wondering this as well. Yeah. N- no, to my knowledge, while the monster has that status currently inflicted, mm-hmm. it, you cannot uh, generate an additional points to um, for the application of that one thing. So if a monster is paralyzed and you're hitting it with a paralysis weapon, uh, that won't work in terms of paralyzing it for the next time. You have to wait for that at the end. Um, that being said, um, as soon as they get out of the animation... Uh, if you can, you know, time your attacks well enough, you can usually get off like a a golf swing or a super pound just before they've completely recovered, and maybe you can start building it up. I think starting as early as then. Hmm. Okay. So I mean, I think really good people uh, can time it so that they, their golf swing will connect just as the monster uh, recovers from the stagger, and usually that's about the right time, anyways. And that's a good way to start boosting up your your KO damage while they're down. Um, an interesting question, actually, I don't know the answer to this, is whether the KO damage you're doing while they're knocked out adds to them being exhausted. And that might work. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. That I don't know it. about that, though. Well, we've been talking about this before the podcast, but, uh, I mean, Monster Hunter has these, these, these huge, amazing mechanics and, and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, to explore the game fully takes such, so, such a long time and there are still going to be some kind of mysteries or some kind of you know, weird mechanics you're, you're still not really familiar with, right? 
Oh, yeah, there's, I mean, and there's never, ever really a completely definitive answer because it's not like we're the actual programmers in Japan. Um, I mean, there's been a lot of looking into, I guess, the game's code, like in terms of like changing different hex values. And I understand there's this cheat that's available where you can kind of see like the actual numbers of the actual tolerances and stuff like that. So I guess you can figure some of those things out. Mm -hmm. But in, in for the most part, I prefer not to read too deeply into that because it kind of kind of ruins the mystery of the game a little. Yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. And I think you know it's it's such such a cool idea to uh, to kind of keep some some stuff hidden from players and enable players to kind of. Um, create theories about it or maybe um, you know to, maybe to uh, leak some information also to players so uh, they can kind of spread this in in information in the community you know um, yeah, I just you, lay down uh, trap and bombs guys oh, so okay 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 so we get ready I'm gonna start fishing soon okay yes so just get your bombs ready if you have them so, so we have to stand at the spot where you're going to be appear you already put in a trap and at this very oh, it's already there okay I, awesome. I'm very uh, I'm very efficient. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw it actually. I never knew that you could fish him out with a frog. I saw this strategy with uh, on on your on your videos, and it was you know it really blew my my mind. Well, we're about to blow Gobel's mind. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Careful! I'm all right, I'm sitting down a small barrel okay. bomb. Okay. Okay. Just go ahead and start stabbing. Yes. <clears throat> so I um, got him in the wall there. So what I wanted to, to talk a little bit about is um, how I got on the US servers because actually that's an uh, interesting uh, interesting thing. I, we were planning on, on getting together on Monster Hunter Tri for quite a while and I ordered the game um, uh, from, from America because you know you have to use the American version in order to play with people in America. Kind of Capcom split, um, split the entire online community into different regions. And so uh, just recently you know, the game took like a month to, to ship somehow they had like really really great travels to ship it to me and w w it, it arrived just a couple of days before this podcast and and it, i was so relieved when it when it when it arrived um because it meant that we were would be able to do this podcast uh, today however the problem was oh i got stunned with my level again yeah i'm stunned with you <laughs> and the problem was that um that once i put the game in my wii i realized oh my gosh wii is actually not region free uh, I totally forgot about it, so I wasn't able to play the game on my uh, my Wii console. So in order to uh, to do this podcast today today with you guys, I actually had to hack my Wii. <laughs> so uh, there is actually this this huge community of of um, of uh, well, it's basically a homebrew community. But at some point, people figured out on how to install their own software on on the Wii. And so um, this huge, amazingly rich community uh, was created on um, or, uh, no, about Wii homebrew stuff. And I had like a small insight into how, how this, this everything worked. I actually installed a little bit of, of the stuff um, way back when I first got my Wii and when the first time all these exploits appeared. But I never actually used it. Um, I, tr tr I tried a couple of, of programs that appeared. Oh, you just had it like chilling out for a while. Yeah, I had to. There's like this homebrew channel. Wow, we just cut his tail. Wow. How about that? Huh? Oh wow, this it doesn't happen too often. I, I think the only con valuable contribution I've made is I think I actually slice his tail. <laughs> Good, job. Good job. Good job. He, he should be really close to. Uh, oh, we should have to paint bomb. Oh, geez, yeah, this is a capture quest. Oh yeah. Oh, this is capture quest. Okay, I'm, oh, I have a paint bomb with me. No problem. Oh, I've got like a, a whole, whole bunch. Um, he's still okay. Is he still okay? Okay. He's still, he's still yeah, alright. He's good. So uh, there's actually you can um, uh, for people who never fought the M Michael. Have you fought the global yet? Is, is, does does, the, does he seem familiar to you? No, <coughs> this okay. is not familiar to me. So one one thing you can do is to break his lat lantern. He this this shiny thing at his at his um, at his nose, I guess. I've been aiming for it for a while now, but I, I'm not sure if I'm I'm not really hitting it. Yeah, it's very difficult to hit uh, while he's on land. I think underwater it's much much easier. Yeah, also, when he's paralyzed or knocked out. Oh yes, yes, that's also because he lets it hang down to the to the floor, and you can kind of hit it. So anyway, um, yeah. So I um, and I had like this um, this homebrew channel chilling out, but you know. Uh, I, I'm uh, I did you know, the thing that Nintendo expects from me, and I installed all the updates on a regular basis. And some of the updates kind of printed, printed some of the stuff, and I had to kind of go through this very, very long, incredibly scary manual 
on how to uh, hack the Wii. And, you know, every second line in this manual... Oh, uh, yeah, he's done. Yeah, I wasn't really paying attention. I was oh, just yes. stabbing him because I was listening to you, Christian. No problem. So here you have, can you capture him now? Yes, you can yeah, capture him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, so who's going to put the bomb? Uh, I'll the bomb? put the trap up. I, I get the portable trap, oh, so... Tra trap, of course, not the bomb. <laughs> oh, it's the easy shock trap in this game. I'm oh, sorry. nice. Nice. Um, where is, where he? is he? Oh, he's uh, he's uh, hidden. Oh, uh, underwater. Okay. Ah, there he is. There he is. Wily. Very wily. Well, yeah, underwater, I think he's much, much more he difficult. I, I've been fighting him for, um, in high rank for uh, in recent times, and uh, I, I'm struggling with this pattern underwater. It's difficult to see what he's doing. Oh, mm -hmm. no! <laughs> oh, no! No, no. Oh, there we go. Man. All right then. I was laying an additional shot. Oh, there we go. Oh, Everybody. Wow. Oh. New Year's miracle. Uh, oh gosh, this is going to go in history. <laughs> to a global nose. I didn't think I, I was playing on a trap. I wasn't paying attention anymore. Oh, people have been, have been looking so long forward oh, yeah. <laughs> to this. Wow, a great highlight for. <laughs> it's a late Christmas gift. Oh. <laughs> To you, a uh, shepherd offered his life. Yeah, uh, <laughs> wow. I didn't even pay attention. I was listening to you again. It's a, we promised my death, didn't we? Did yes. We did that earlier. Yeah. <laughs> so, so how how difficult was it? Because uh, I've been thinking about doing some of the homebrew stuff on uh, on my Wii. Well, for me it wasn't difficult because I I had the luck because I bought the Wii on release day and it is quite a old Wii, so it it has uh. it doesn't have a lot of hardware securities that uh, that sometimes cause troubles. Uh, but it's a, it's a scary procedure I can tell you because uh, you know in this manual I had like every second line says, "Be careful, don't do this because you will break your Wii." Your, oh, man. your Wii becomes unusable. And, um, you know, this is for me a horrible thing. I mean, I invested already 200 hours in Monster Hunter Try. And if, <laughs> if I brick my Wii, I lose all this progress. I mean, I still have my skills and everything. It's no problem, basically. But, you know, um, every items I collected, all the, all the Raytheon plates and stuff like that, you know, all my uh, armor and, and all my equipment will be gone. So I was really, um, I was really, uh, it was really nerve wracking to do this. Uh, but once I, I got, got through it, um, it was actually quite interesting because I was able to do things like copying save games. Yes. So f one one thing that we doesn't allow with with some saves, like with Monster Hunter Try, try uh, save, is um, it doesn't allow you to copy it on a on a SD card. And I guess it's because they want to prevent um, people from duplicating accounts or hacking accounts, stuff like that. Um, but with when you when you install the homebrew stuff, you can uh, install tools like um, it's I think it's called a save game manager, and it allows you to extract every save game uh, on the Wii on an SD card. And what um, this allowed me also to uh, take my save game da data from the um, European version of the game and transfer it over to the American version of the game. So um, I, when I move over to the American servers right now to play with you guys, I could actually take all my equipment with me. So That's wow. very convenient. That's incredibly okay. inc inconvenient. So, so on the other side of the, the benefits of the hacker community, uh, I, th I thought I'd tell this tale. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Monster Hunter Freedom Unite. Uh, I recently got HR9, mm -hmm. uh, so I've basically finished... Wow. Oh, Congratulations! Did you do most of that solo, or were you playing with other people? Oh no, I was playing with. Uh, oh, this is online, so HR nine. Oh, okay. Online. I, okay. I'm still doing the the the, neck, the cat quests. Those quests are incredibly difficult. Uh, I was kind of amazed, but uh, so I was playing. Uh, it was me and this random person. We were ranking up. I think we were HR. We were just getting into G rank, and we were stuck on a cantor. Uh, and so we were sitting there playing, and uh, we were doing some quests that we could do with just two of us. And this guy shows up, and he says, just put up, put up whatever. I don't even care. Let's just fight. I, I don't care. I'll, I'll kill anything. Do you want tail carves? What do you want? So we say, well, I guess we're going to put up a cantor. Why not? So we put up a cantor, and we get all ready, and uh, he, we get in there. Um, the guy runs up to a cantor, one swipe, kills him. No, that's pathetic. <laughs> it was like, what? What just happened? Oh my god! This is like the the the, the most badass of badass creatures in this game. <laughs> he just walks up, just one hit. He said, "Oh, I forgot to get the tail. Put up another one." 
So Aww. another one, he cuts off the tail, and then so two hits, and he kills this monster. Mm. <laughs> so uh, that was kind of our, uh, it w- which, you know, at the time, it was sort of, oh, thank God, we don't have to deal with this anymore. Because mm-hmm. uh, we had fought a Cantor probably a good ten times at that point. Uh, our gear was barely good enough to fight them, and we kept running into people who weren't at the level that they needed to be. So we were excited that this random guy came in and was practically was basically cheating uh, and killing it. It's hard to say no. You're like, what? I could have all of this really easy, these easy parts in this game that's incredibly difficult. Mm-hmm. So uh, we haven't done it since then, but man, that was a that was a that was a unique thing that I saw, and I've heard about it happening in this game, which would be interesting. Well, uh, I, mean, I was under the impression that Capcom had like uh, detections for cheats. Oh, by the way, Michael, if you want to uh, eat, I- I'm going to host a meal again. Sounds good. Yeah, so you have to mooch a meal. Yeah, um, I'm I'm kind of terrified right now because um, I I did this 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 trick which I obviously we don't uh, we don't recommend this to any of our listeners. You know, uh, this is a very highly dangerous thing, and you might uh, get banned from uh, from using Monster Hunter, or you might uh, break your Wii or d- do horrible things to to it. So, you know, we d- we uh, uh, we certainly don't uh, <laughs> don't uh, suggest that you try to do it at home. Yeah, I've uh, heard of people getting like week or month or even permanent bans from Monster Hunter before. Yeah, and I'm actually terrified of that. That might happen to me right now because you know they this... might track you down. They're gonna watch this podcast and say, "Get them." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they even though maybe you have to put like a like a you know censor out my name or something. <laughs> uh, do we want to capture a barrel or yes. do we want to? Okay, capture a barrel. We are Where quite good it? in time, right? What what time? How? Oh yeah, we have we have we, we're recording for half an hour, so we have. Yeah, I have cool. thirty minutes. Yeah, and that, that's fine. Uh, do we want to answer another question? Yeah, sure, we can do that as well. Um, so here is um, here is a message from Tom. Wait, let, let me accept this quest before I, I take this question. So the quest uh, the question is: um, Hi, Tom here. First of all, loving the podcast and also the Let's Play. I'm just wondering which is more useful on a Switch X. <laughs> Quest- oh. Sh- Shepard, this is for you. <laughs> oh, that's for me. Yeah, I'm an expert on Switch Xs. Oh, I yeah. love them. Yes. Love them. Can't get enough of them. So he, he wants to know uh, which is better, the elemental file or the power file? Oh, that's a good question. I mean... <sighs> what are files anyway? I haven't used the Switch, Switch X too often. I, okay. I didn't, didn't well... dig, dig into it. Well, every Switch Axe has a file in it, and that's what powers the sword mode. Mm-hmm. And so you have a gauge in it, and it fills up naturally on its own when it's an axe mode or sheathed. And then if it's below halfway, you can actually uh, hit the R button to reload it and, and kind of give it a boost that way. And essentially, whenever you go into sword mode, whatever file you have will add a different ability to that weapon. Mm-hmm. And the way it works is actually, I think I was a little wrong on this, to be honest with you, uh, in one of my podcasts. Uh, power files basically make every attack from your switch axe a critical hit when mm-hmm. it's in sword mode. Oh. So you get an automatic 1.25 boost to your raw damage. This is uh, amazing. Yeah, that's great. Uh, elemental files do the same thing, but they do it to your elemental damage. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, of course, there are dragon files, which add a dragon element, but do not actually multiply the dragon damage, as far as I know. And then there's different, well, there aren't really any different status files. And try, there's only a paralysis file. But in that case, all you're getting is paralysis effects. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, that's, that's the general mechanic. Uh, I'm not sure what high-end switch axes have power files, because I haven't really gone through them like that. But that's how you'll know. A power file is for raw damage, and elemental files are for elemental damage. Mm-hmm. Okay. So which one is better? Uh, well, I mean, uh, you know, if you can get a really high-end switch axe with a power file on it, that would be great, because generally raw damage is better to use than elemental damage, only because monsters generally take more damage from that mm-hmm. than from elemental. But, I mean, whatever you have is, is fine. I mean, it's no, it's not a bad thing you're ever going to have, because you're going to be using the attacks really based on whatever you want anyways. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I see. 
Yeah, I, I mean, we are. We're, it's it's clear that we are not really big fans of the Switch X on this podcast, and um, but a lot of the people in the community are using them. And, and well, apparently, everyone that listens to this podcast not only loves Switch Xs, they also love the motion control. Yes, they love. That's all they ever want to talk about. <laughs> yes, and also they want to see you die all the time. <laughs> well, they just got their wish. Wish granted. <laughs> So, I am in just such bad form. Like I'm taking medicine. Like I'm on like two ibuprofen. Uh, I'm not in any alcohol yet because that would kill <laughs> my business, But I would be on that too. Yes, and you're on hot drinks, I guess. Uh, oh, I, I wish. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. Well, actually, that was a favor. I got you out of the ring. Yes, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, okay. So, um, Michael, have you fought, fought the Baroth yet? No. Oh, this is the first time you fight a bar- fighting a Baroth. Oh, no, yes. Yeah, fight him at least once. I don't recognize him. Okay, then, then um, because for um, you know, I the the Kuropeko for me was like this this uh, huge emotional challenge because I I, uh, I read so much about it in on, on your um, on your um, blog, but the Baroth for many people is the you know the skill challenge because this is the the monster many people are actually failing all the time and they. Mm-hmm. And as you can see, you know he's quite quick, and you have to, you have to, and he's doing quite damaging attacks, you know, charging oh, attacks, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, he does that. a lot of damage. Yeah. So it's uh, interesting the you know what you carry with you from previous sorts of video games, even back to the arcade era, how you plug in as a gamer the sense that okay, what are his patterns? Like, what do I need to look for? What when, when does he signal about about to do X or Y? Yeah, yeah. But if I'm with Monster Hunter, they they give you that with Monster Hunter, and then they they switch it up. Yes. You know, like when you don't expect it, there's there's some little animation or there's some little pattern breaker that that'll creep in that you don't expect, and so you can't necessarily rely on the tricks that you think you you knew from before. Yeah, yeah. But on the other hand, you know, you you had uh, like um, this, this incredible, I, I think, amazing podcast um, podcast. Um, blog post about you know when you described uh, how Monster Hunter is this game where you do the preparation you know where, where it's very much about preparing for uh, for um, for a hunt and also a game that uh, incredibly re- you know, rewards being watchful and rewards um, you know planning ahead and and uh, you know paying attention to what happens yeah absolutely and it you know the games that give you the incentive to go back to your place and take your time and ponder different options and that those options are actually viable that they're all there isn't actually always an, the optimal strategy or yeah. the the single best way it um, it means that people well people are going to write you and ask you questions about is this better or is this better and, and you, actually there might not be an actual you know quantitatively correct answer yeah exactly exactly and i think that's that's what most hunter is is about and i think you know even even though you're just hunter rank 10 which you know i guess many listeners are going to say oh what is what's this guy doing here and i mean he's not really most hunter and still it's it's evident from the very first um first um you know minute of the game that that you know this is what the game is about about you know paying attention about about thinking about what you're doing and choosing your own path exactly Exactly, and I, you learn from other players. I mean, I suppose that's true in most multiplayer games, or like in World of Warcraft or whatever. But um, this is a gross overgeneralization. You guys would be way more able to to know this than me. But um, I, I when I was playing this game much more frequently, I I never had maybe one or two negative experiences with with players in this game. Mm. I, I find that the community is they're just fun to play with. That there's. I don't know why the Monster Hunter community seems to attract players that, that I don't know, they just seem to be more a little bit more generous, a little bit more helpful than other multiplayer communities I've been involved with. That's a good point. Uh, I think one of the aspects is that you're actually always fighting cooperative, so you're always fighting, fighting together against a, a yeah. com- common enemy, and yeah, you're not n- never fighting against other players, actually. Yeah, and you're not uh, climbing all over each other for uh, the swag that gets dropped. That, yeah, you know, yeah. it's not somebody trying to steal something from you or whatever. Um, actually, I find it quite interesting that you can't even trade with other players. Yeah, so, you can trade some small things. But yeah, nothing yeah, like like maybe like changing. drinks, drinks or it's, something. Yeah, rarity four down. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Or uh, rarity four? I think it was the three. Yeah, are you sure? I think it's a three down. Four is when you can't can't trade oh, okay so uh, i think that that's a that's a great point you made michael i think what it is is because unlike like first person shooters or rts's or things like that where you can come in with experience from other games and start it and already be awesome 
with Monster Hunter, everybody that has ever played it, they've all started off completely getting demolished by something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, nobody started off, like, really good at the game. Like, you know, it's been hundreds and hundreds of hours for me, and I still die every once in a while. <laughs> like uh, how today, for example. <laughs> today, for example. Uh, and, and when you have that, like, it's, you know, you, you have to be humble. You know, you can't, you can't come into this and, and just be uh, really arrogant about your play style all the time. I'm going to trap him just so we can do some extra damage. Yeah, yeah. Although, he's, he's, my guess is that he's really close to being captured. He's really captured. close. He has to be close. He's well, not flashing yet, though, which is the weird thing. Right? I still have... still have crap, uh, Capture Guru. Yeah. It's weird. Well, uh, he, he, we broke uh, we broke this Barrow's um, head actually right now. So I mean that that doesn't happen too too often to me personally. Uh, it requires it really does require a hammer or like really good use of bombs. I think he's ready. Uh, I just had him in a trap. I can't. Uh, I can't oh. see because like your arrows are covering. Sorry him. about that. <laughs> no, no, I didn't okay. realize that. No, it's okay. It's okay. He's tranquilized. So. Okay. So he. Uh, so. Uh, He's probably not ready yet because we had him tranquilized and in a trap, and he wasn't captured yet. So I, I recently uh, they figured out how to get Monster Hunter Portable Third onto the Go, the PSP Go. Yes, uh, which I'm very excited about. So you so, uh, so you got gotten under your PSP Go? Yeah, uh, I've actually got the uh, the translation uh, going. Almost all of the weapons are translated except for the bows. The uh, the swords, all of the menu items and stuff for the cats. And and you uh, know that's again one of those aspects of this, this whole whole you know hacking or or a homebrew community. You know that you're able to do stuff like this, like fan translations. Yes, um, but the interesting thing about that game is uh, just going on what we were talking about earlier. I fought uh, who's the anteater? I think it's Aoshira is the mm -hmm. name that is in there. Oh, he that's the uh, the the bug. Uh, Airshear is the bear, I think. Yeah. Um, Ran Ran Kuro or Ran Guru is the the ant eater. He destroyed you. Oh, really? It's a, the bear destroyed me because I didn't know what to expect. <laughs> the and bear I was, destroyed I mean, when you first fought him. Yes. <laughs> he, he showed funny. up in a quest, and, and I, I was, was like, talking oh, about geez. how sympathetic people are, monster. Hunter. I am completely unsympathetic. That is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I did not expect him to charge me and then start eating my face. Oh, what? That's my favorite part about it. <laughs> I, I don't think I fought this one. Do you mean the, the green bear? It's the purple bear. Oh, the purple uh, bear. He shows up. He's the HR1 uh, urgent quest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, you mean online? No, offline. Or the one star uh, <laughs> urgent quest off really? offline. Okay, okay. Yeah, then I, I guess I fought him. Hmm, okay. He, he looks like a bear. His tongue's usually hanging. Yeah, out. yeah. He's the one. Of course. I, I thought he was green. Okay. No. Ugh. Yeah, the, this bear, this, this bear is really a, a tough guy. I don't know what his problem is. He's not dying. <laughs> Lock no, it we, off. We don't even want to kill him. We just want to capture him. He has to be so close. I'll yeah. put another trap down. Oh, oh. He's there we oh, go. Oh, nice. Bingo, bingo. Wow, awesome. That was ridiculous. Yeah, Baroth, you know, is, is the, the monster runner but mo where, I mean, you have, uh, most people are asking questions on how to deal with this guy. He's, he's really tough guy. He's really the monster where you first have to really pay attention, where the game says, stop, you're going too, too fast, you're, you're taking it like a normal game, where you just mash buttons. In this game you have to block, in this game you have to watch what the monster is doing, in this game you have to really pay attention. Wow, and we actually get a, get a lot of loot from him. Yeah, we completed all the subquests. Uh, so all that, yeah, that was nice. And that's a very, very good thing. You're right. Um, okay, yeah. So um, when you're talking about Monster Hunter, uh, Monster Hunter um, about the PSP, uh, the, we have actually a good question on on this subject. Uh, it's from Anonymous, and uh, Anonymous asks us, "Hey guys, what do you think um, is better to play uh, Monster Hunter on a PSP Go or a PSP 3000?" Thanks. Oh, this is like the same question. What should I use the Wemo or should I use the <laughs> well, class? There's, there's yeah, only I mean, one. There's only one answer we can give, and that's the the PSP three thousand. Yeah, obviously. I what? Mean, 
<laughs> do, do you, do you want to know my setup? My setup is kind of amazing. Uh, uh, I'm going to tell you even if you don't want to know. Oh, um, go ahead. Uh, so I, I bought the cradle. Right, and it's hooked in to my television. The cradle. Uh, What's yeah, what? it has a cradle, so it can hook up. Oh. So mm -hmm. I see. I, it. Yeah. I have it. It is plugged in, so it's got a permanent power supply. It's going to my television, and Bluetooth is on it, and I can play from anywhere in my game room on my television. Mm. So I recommend the PSP Go, but you're going to have to spend probably another seventy dollars in order to be able to do all of that. So you're basically using it as a as a home console. Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> this is crazy. Well, I I must say um I'm I'm a big fan of the PSP um uh, of the of their old school PSP. Uh, but I do understand the allure of of the PSP Go because it it looks quite nice and you know it has this cool sliding function. Actually having it in your pocket, it feels like much more like a high-tech uh, device. But of course, there is this big problem that it's very difficult or, or almost impossible to get Monster Hunter 3rd uh, on it right now. If you want to get Monster Hunter 3rd on it, you have to get, uh, well, again, you have to do some uh, homebrew stuff. Right? Uh, that's how... Yeah, it, that's it's, how. It, it's sort of amazing uh, how much people can do through uh, save game exploits. <laughs> yeah, like you have to have a certain game and you have to order a certain demo and you have to start a demo and load a certain save game and then do something in the game and then the game crashes and then they exploit, yeah. exploit this. It, yeah, yeah. It's just a. It's like the what the Wii had the Luigi's Mansion thing, right? Uh, I, I used the Zelda Twilight hack. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Uh, Michael, uh, I got Brainy Gamer. Uh, what what are your views on this sort of thing? And not to kind of not to put you on the spot. Yeah, we, we you don't you don't have to uh, admit that you hacked anything. With <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just think you know when the console makers limit you in what feel like arbitrary ways it's like you're just handing the community a, a ticket to say hack me mm. you know mm. and I, i've never understood the, the the decisions that they make and you know even other consoles why is it that certain games on the ps3 i can slide my usb stick in there take my save file with me and go play somewhere else mm. other games for no apparent reason don't let you do it And I've thought about it, you know, like, well, why would this game, is there something about it or is there something about the properties of the game or the way the game works or well, why would they sort of disincentivize transporting my save file? And I, if I've never been able to make any sense of it. I've always thought that these, so many of these decisions that they make to limit your ability as a gamer to do what you want to do just feel arbitrary and kind of, uh, I don't know, like, well, we've never done it that way, so we're not going to do it that way, you know? Yeah. Um, and, I, and, so, and so people hack their systems. Um, I, it, it might be also something to do with you know, different cultural things as well. Because, for example, I noticed that um, if you look at stuff like achievements, which is not really like safe games, but, um, but there is this kind of also this you know, different, different kind of culture going on. That, for example, um, if, if Japanese games are using achievements, then achievements are mostly hidden. So it's something that you stumble across, um, not something that you work towards. Yeah, Final Fantasy XIII, almost all of the achievements were hidden. Yeah, and, and you see that in a lot of um, like JRPGs um, being imported, you know, um, or translated into into um, no, uh, English language, and um, you always see that the trophies or achievements are always hidden. And on the other hand, you know, in uh, of course America or in in in, in Western world in general, uh, their achievements are or um, or you know spelled out for you and even contain spoilers sometimes. Uh, but you always see ahead of you, you know, what you're working towards. And I, it might be also kind of like the same thing with with the safe games, like you know, the people are the developers in in Japan or maybe in certain countries. I don't know if it's, it's a specific Japan thing. Are much more protective of of you know of are much more afraid of people hacking into this the stuff. I suppose. I um, yeah. I, it just. I, I wish they had a more careful way of um, really taking a look at the community and how the, how they actually behave and how they actually use the systems yeah. as opposed to these ways that seem to me to be fixed in tradition and cor corporate culture. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, for me, uh, f um, I, can, I kind of understand why they don't want you to um, 
transfer a monster hunter safe on a on a um, safe card because and then obviously it opens up the possibility of people hacking their their items but on the other hand you know as we as we realize that you know you don't really fight against other players so even if somebody gets this huge amazing armor because he he cheated you know it's not like like he's able to um, make uh, other pe players miserable for for doing that right right uh, so uh, there is not, not really a, a, a very big reason of, of being so protective. And the uh, other, yeah, I think that the 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 spoil sport yeah. the, is kind of prevalent in this game. I mean, the guy that came in and just kind of said, "Put up whatever, and we'll go fight it." it you know, it, it kind of takes away from the majesty of it. It's like, well, I didn't get to achieve this. Yeah, I guess, and and of course, uh, there's always this thing, you know, I, uh, one guy has been grinding this game for hours, and then some other guy come, comes in and he just, you know, changes the save game, and, and then he gets everything for free, that's kind of yeah. kind of unfair. But on the other hand, uh, um, you know, you know, they are already quite protective of the game, uh, of how the game works, and, you know, s people are still hacking it, so, you know, all these, all these, uh, all these um, security, um, security, um, well, ideas, you know, all these, all these restrictions, aren't really um, prevent people from doing the hacking. Everybody always finds a way to 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 cheat in the game. Yeah, but the number of decisions that, um, particularly console makers, but also publishers make, based on assumptions about the 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 worst kind of people, you know, like we're going to protect ourselves against the people who are the the kind of the the worst cheaters. It it's that horrible thing where the the small number of people ruin the fun for everyone. <laughs> yeah, and I, I just it, it, that it seems to me there's there's another way of thinking about that that says let's let's really maximize what our student what our what our players who matter most to us want. Yeah, and if that means it's going to cost a certain amount of you know jerks who do it the wrong way, that's just the cost of it. Yeah, I, yeah. I absolutely agree. I mean, uh, for example, you you just mentioned um, you're um, actually working for a university, right? Yeah. And and you said you were t you were taking your your Wii with you to your, to your work, right? Yeah, I put it in my backpack and I take it with me uh, whenever I take it. You know, whenever I need it at work, or I'm I'll sometimes use it in class. Mm -hmm. And uh, it and it, it's the only system I do that with. Um, I have a 360 and a PS3. In my in my office and homes, so one, one each, and and I never worry about it, you know. But with the, the Wii, I constantly have to pack it in my backpack because of the darn save file problem. Yeah, because you just can't transfer it on the file. And actually, I have the very very same problem also working for uh, for a uh, university, and it's the same thing, you know. If whenever I want to take something, uh, show something to other people, I uh, with other systems, it's not not a big problem. I just always have a save game or some kind of memory card. But the yeah. Wii, with the Wii, you always have to take it with you, and I'm actually quite um, quite afraid of what happens at some point, you know, when a new generation of Wii is coming out, and then suddenly probably we'll have to, you know, take everything, you know, everything we bought on the on the on the Wii channels and stuff like that. We all, we will have to take it, you know, we have to buy it once uh, more, one more time, I yeah. guess. Or what happens well, if, if the Wii breaks, you know, stuff like that. Exactly. This is yeah, and I think well, I know it, it, Nintendo can transfer it. You can. If, yeah, if they'll do it for you. No. They'll do it, but you have to send it in, and mm. it's a big to do. To, for it's all that same mentality. It's that you know, father knows best mentality. You know that the only way you can possibly fix it is to send it to Nintendo. Like literally, send the whole thing to them, and they will do it for you. Uh, I just think you know, in a post Steam world where we buy something and we have the right to use it, then and we can load up and uh, you know, Steam on another computer and just log right in and play. It just increasingly gets more and more absurd that. These games I own, that I've downloaded from WiiWare or whatever, yeah. that I can only play them on this one white box. You know, yeah. well, it's great you bring up the whole Steam thing because I think that's really the, uh, Nick's main issue when he bought that PSP Go. Is when he got that, I guess he was essentially assuming that Sony would look out for it and make sure that really the major releases at least would be brought out for it. And and what did uh, Gabe Newell say? Uh, Pirates are nothing more other than underserved customers. Was that his quote? Yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, and I, I mean, really, I mean, I don't condone it, but I mean, at least in Nick's case, he really had no other option other than going out and buying a brand new PSP if if he wanted to play Monster Hunter Portable Third because there is no digital release. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes, which is really uh, quite a shame because I mean, this is probably 
the last greatest release the PSP will ever see, if not maybe uh, an expansion to the Monster Hunter Portable 3rd, maybe Monster Hunter Portable 3rd G. But, I mean, for something of this caliber, you think Sony would have said, hey, you know, we're willing to pay you basically any amount of money, but just make sure you bring this game over. And yeah. uh, they didn't do that. I wonder what's what the reasoning behind it. That's also the problem. You know, there's no transparency behind it. You no, know, they they don't allow you something, but they don't really explain it. And it's the same thing here. You know, it's they didn't release Monster Hunter Third uh, on the, on the PSP Go, but they don't really explain why. Well, I'm sure I can really explain Portable Third. I mean, it's it's got to just do with with the bottom line. Uh, if you think about it, I mean, no matter the circumstances, Sony's going to take some portion of the proceeds out from their store right Mm. like if you sell a game for sixty dollars they're probably gonna get at least you know five dollars out of that sixty uh in this case you know monster hunter portable third was a retail only release and yet they still sold more retail copies than basically any other psp game that ever that's ever been created yeah i I heard that that the only reason why the psp is still working in japan is monster hunter Mm. you know uh reason I, I had a friend visit me today that I haven't seen in a long time because she spent the last two, three years in Japan. Uh, I used to play Final Fantasy XI with her, uh, which is kind of interesting. But, and a story for another time. She, I asked her, I said, how big is Monster Hunter over there? Mm-hmm. Oh, like, what do you do? She says, everyone on the plane, on every train, so it's a big train society, is usually playing Monster Hunter. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter the age category. <coughs> uh, Sorry group that they're in they're playing monster hunt mm-hmm. uh and i think christian at one point or was it you michael who said uh there's monster hunter breaks in japan now oh yeah yeah I said might. yeah there really are yeah, monster yeah. hunter breaks instead of yeah i think they yeah they take like, breaks instead of coffee breaks they take monster hunter breaks <laughs> yes. uh, I yeah, if you look at those uh, numbers their their sales numbers are it, it's eerily similar to pokemon phenomenon that's yes. yeah. very same phenomenon but i think and and black and white's done well there, but it's really a monster hunter thing now. It's um, I think it's hard to. Uh, I, I think the demographics work in Monster Hunter's favor too, uh, in Japan. And actually, everybody plays it. Actually, I have a friend um, over in Japan right now, and and he's getting you know this entire culture shock uh, in, and uh, he will be coming back next week, and and I'm I'm expecting him you know to rave about you know how amazing Monster Hunter is in in Japan. He I, he already hinted and something like that in his uh, the emails he sent me from Japan. Yeah, it's, it seems to be like an amazing phenomenon. It's it's uh, obvious, especially to people who uh, aren't really familiar with it, um, because then then if, for example, um, no, his girlfriend was was also over there, and and she um, she saw um, like these lines, people people waiting in lines for for buying Monster Hunter, and she didn't realize, you know, she didn't understand that this was there was this game that everybody's playing, and you know, everybody was was anticipating. So for her, it was like this weird phenomenon. But uh, as for uh, um, 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 why? Oh, there's Pekka. Yes, uh, Pekka as, as arrives. For, so for, uh, well, a, wait a minute. Is, we, we haven't actually uh, as mentioned. Uh, we are doing a quest where we have to fight four, four great Jaggy, and uh, Pekka arrives as a guest in this quest. That's nice. And and we fought. I think we already had three Jaggies. We, we've defeated three Jaggies, and now yeah, Kuro the Pekka is fourth here. one is here. Okay. Uh, but what I was going to say about Nintendo. Yes. Um, on our national public radio, so uh, American national public radio, there was a, a series of uh, uh, basically uh, news articles on video games. Mm-hmm. Uh, all of them were kind of interesting. Um, some of them, you know, they had some problems and stuff, uh, kind of like outsider gamer culture making some assumptions and stuff. Uh, but there's a guy on there who, are, they were talking about what Nintendo did. Sorry. <laughs> hey, that's so, all right. But, uh, like, Nintendo took the problem that American gaming has and uh-huh. tried to solve it. So, American gaming has a problem where we produce everything and we don't limit the amount of copies that exist. Uh, so, you have an oversaturation of a market and that market generally gets too saturated and then it collapses because there's just there's not enough room for all of the games that exist. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Nintendo came in and said, hey... We're going to limit this. We're not going to allow certain games to appear in our systems. You can only have so many copies in existence, uh, and it's up to us. It's not up to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you mean the Nintendo Nintendo seal of approval and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. So 
uh, over time that helped them and it really helped the video game industry a lot too because you know a lot of the problems that we had before were gone uh so i think nintendo is still following suit which falls into well that's the way it's always been mm, yeah uh, we, but, we, know, we know better than you do yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, i don't know if i can, if i agree with it but it was definitely something that needed to happen at some point mm. uh, I'm well you can see it's see it cloud uh, to see what the cloud does to people like the steep cloud and things like that mm -hmm. yeah anyway i'm sorry yeah no that, that's a that's a good point actually you know that's that's like the, the the different different side of this this coin well, and the, I think it's interesting, you know, maybe the most locked down company of all, Apple, mm. uh, that wants to, you know, keep a tight fist on as much as they can. And, and even they have had to figure out how to be more open with their online app space, uh, particularly with games, because it's just such a fast moving target. They can't possibly hire enough employees to, to like completely, absolutely review every single game up and down. Their, their approval process and their, just the number of games that are on there number of things that appear on there it's amazing um and they've had to loosen it up because the space is just so active mm -hmm. yeah yeah they definitely. just can't they cannot control it and in many ways it's kind of kind of a smarter way of dealing with it with a thing because you know uh, as from as i understand you know uh, if you want to publish something on on WiiWare, uh, it's a very, very tedious approval process, and you know, kind of have to be an, a certified developer and stuff like that. You know, you just can't uh, start developing right away. And uh, of course, it's much easier to do. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, it's much easier to do that on um, on uh, like a, something like an iPhone, where it just costs you know, it just costs one hundred dollars, and you get everything you need to develop for an iPhone. Well, it's interesting too because I mean, you go to the Android. And, and that's even there's easier. no restrictions. Yeah. There's no restrictions at all. But people seem to uh, be avoiding it, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which uh, I, I guess is kind of it. That's the most interesting thing to me. But it's because I own an Android. Ah. So. so. Well, um, for, uh, there seems to be like there must be some kind of a balance there. I think you know there must be some kind of um, some kind of keeper of the platform who who uh, makes sure that that um, nothing silly, not nothing happens that that destroys the market or kind of that that is kind of bad for for um, the the climate in general. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you must allow uh, people to do the things they want to do, because otherwise you aren't actually doing doing your customers any favor, right? And then you will introduce uh, people who, who will try to exploit your system, like like hackers who will try to uh, you know, to do th stuff um, t uh, to you know, to, g to get the stuff they, they are looking for in from your system. And, and we're getting away from Monster Hunter. We're so. getting oh, well, this, this, this is apologies. This is, yeah, yeah. If you if you were expecting guys just just talking about about hit points stuff like that, you know, this is this is not this kind of episode. <laughs> this is a bizarro cast. This is a bizarro. Ca well, Shepard dies. No one else dies. Ev what? Every everybody is on drugs. <laughs> I'm heavily medicated. Oh yes, yes. Uh, so no, so I'm enjoying the conversation. This yes. is, I mean, this is really like when it comes down to like where is the future of gaming. Like, because like I think what attracts us all to Monster Hunter is, is really that high level of strategy, and you know when the game. Oh, <laughs> nice bombs, Nick. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, I missed. <laughs> oh, wow. This no, is this crazy. You didn't. No, this is a uh, good times. Let's uh, train. Um, what was I gonna say? You know, when it's so easy for this game to get overshadowed, I mean, that's that's really bad. You know, that's that's bad for everyone. You know, if the game doesn't get the sales number it needs, I mean, this in America, I believe, Try only got something like two hundred thousand sales, maybe three hundred thousand by now. But I mean, I, you know, it I should have it gotten much more. Yeah. Did it? Did it finally hit five hundred thousand? Okay. Yeah, but I mean, it was I mean, popular. considering the market share that the Wii has, which at the time that the Wii was released or the game was released, I think it was like two to one. For like the PlayStation Three or the 360, um, you're, it's just sort of surprising that it didn't sell more. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's what I'm constantly trying to figure out. Like, what does Monster Hunter need to succeed like it does in, in Japan? Yeah, yeah, and, and because we have a bigger population here of people that play games, right? Definitely. I mean, Japan has some real enthusiasts, but in terms of overall, you know, total market size, I mean, America is so much larger. Um, I don't know. I think 
the issue is, uh, who, who told me about this article? I, I read it. I, it may have not been from any of you, but um, a mother walks into a retail store. You know, she goes to the Wii section, and this is like the vast majority of Wii owners in the country, and she's not there to buy games. She's there to buy utility software. She's there to buy maybe a new Wii Sports or maybe a Wii Play or Wii Fit. But other than that, like when they look at total market share in the United States, I think a lot of these people that own Wiis aren't playing games. Mm. They just aren't interested in it. Like they actually say specifically, I don't want to play a game. I want something else for my Wii to do for me mm. other than playing well, a game. Well, it's interesting because, I mean, there aren't a lot of uh, HD TVs around yet. So, which is weird to say, but like a general person, like the the general population isn't going to own an HD TV, or they're just going to have things that are hooked up. They might own an HD TV, but everything's hooked up through component. Or oh man, this is even yeah, worse. Yeah, composite. Isn't that funny? Oh, yeah. This is even worse in in uh, here over here in Europe because here in Europe they are selling HD TVs, but you don't actually get TV in HD. Oh wow! What? Yes. But Why would they do that? Well, it's 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 kind of maybe you get some weird channels in HD, but generally, you know, HD uh, as a, as a concept hasn't arrived in Europe yet so much. Uh, at least, you know, in the broadcasting, you know, in the signal that is being broadcasted. But uh, with uh, Netflix showing up on the Wii finally, uh, it's like the the people that were using the system not as a, a gaming system but just a utility on their television. Uh, got like a huge boost, so suddenly these people all feel you know more justified in what they've done. By the way, we don't have Netflix in Europe as well. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> well, and Germany is like the worst of the worst though when it comes to restricting content coming in, right? Um, even if even if Netflix was in the rest of Europe, I'm sure it would be blocked in Germany for some reason. Germany and Australia. No, we we get a kind of, kind of a bad reputation for that, but it's actually you know just you know very violent content is, is really restricted. But okay. otherwise, otherwise it's, we're kind of kind of okay. It's it's okay. Yeah, but you get the you get to keep the nudity in your games. Yeah, yeah, we're we're totally fine with nudity. Nudity is super. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of weird. This the, actually, um, I, I actually did you know, Michael. I did a search on Brainy Gamer about Monster Hunter just to see you know where were you mentioned Monster Hunter because I wanted to find your your Monster Hunter um, posts, and in there I found a very old post uh, where you commented on on cultural differences and when you also commented on on Monster Hunter Two, which I guess was uh, Monster Hunter Freedom Un Freedom Unite, uh, about how popular it was in, in Japan and how. How you weren't actually, you know, seeing this kind of enthusiasm for this game here in America, and you were commenting on all, lots, all sorts of different differences uh, between cultures. You know, for example, that racing games are, are receive much better reviews in Europe than they re receive in, uh, in over in America and stuff like that. Yeah, it, I've never, um, I've never quite understood why these differences exist. I mean, I guess we can just chalk it up to cultural differences, but. Um, you, I, I think if you read Edge magazine, for example, mm -hmm. um, they they like European games better than American magazines do in general. They particularly like uh, English developers. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> and I guess that's kind of widely known. But um, you know, maybe they pay more attention to the work. You know, maybe they're we dismiss certain things and we ought to look more carefully at them. And um, I don't know. I. It, it feels to me like the American critical uh, gaming press is kind of at a crossroads, mm -hmm. um, trying to figure out who, who their market is and what they want to be. When you look at uh, Game Informer, it's, it's quickly becoming the largest circulation magazine in the country. It's past Reader's Digest. Mm, wow. Yeah, I thought, I thought it already reached that point. I was under that impression. Wow. Yeah. Because, I mean, not many people subscribe to magazines anymore. And yet, whenever you sign up for a GameStop card, you get a free subscription. Yeah. Isn't that right? And, yeah. So. Yeah. And, well, and people are like, well, that doesn't count because GameStop's giving the, ga the magazine away for free. And that's, that's how the world works now. You know, that's why the USA Today has the circulation it does. And there are other, a lot of other publications that are figuring out new ways of getting their, their publication into the hands of an audience. And this Game, game Informer seems to me is pretty, pretty savvy about that. Yeah. Um, you can't well, just, and I'm sure you know, everyone that gets their copy of Game Informer at least flips through it and reads it. I mean, and if you can promise that to your advertisers, that's all you really need to have a publication, right? Exactly. Yeah, and and they're 
I, I think that this, you know, look at what EGM is trying to do and the, you know, what are we going to be like online and what are we going to be like in print? Can, can we do both? And uh, Kill Screen, you know, and other magazines are coming back to print and sort of saying print is good and we're going to up the ante on quality and we're going to make a really good looking magazine. And then all these iPad apps, which are coming out, these sort of, you know, specially tailored to a device magazines. I mean, the whole space is in such a crazy upheaval. It's exciting, but I mean, who knows where it's going to go? Oh yeah, I mean, I'm I'm completely jealous ab about this development because I, I think in uh, in Europe, uh, at least in Germany, we are still a, a far away from from this stuff. I mean, games are uh, still not really recognized as something that is that is uh, that people are doing, um, and um, and we are you know the the kind of situation you're talking about is would be uh, unthinkable, I think, for a German uh, games magazine. So, um, but you know, we're kind of preparing that. We're kind of ex expecting that that this kind of development will at some point arrive. You know, uh, uh, with some kind of um, delay, arrive also in in Europe, and then uh, we also we have to uh, decide for ourselves where where this the thing is going to go. Yeah. So um, we finished uh, this quest with with for Jaggy. I, I recently did this quest a couple of times to get the Jaggy mask to, to switch the topics a little bit. <laughs> Um, and I finally get the, got the Jaggy mask, something I n never achieved in the uh, on the on the European servers. So, are we going to do a yet another quest, or are we going to finish the podcast? Um, uh, we can do another. It's up to you, Christian, because you're the one that's over in, in Germany, and uh, God knows what time. What is it like? Three fifty-two in the morning. Two fifty-two in the morning. It's two fifty-two, but it's okay. Uh, if you want to, whatever you want to do. Well, I still have a little bit in, in my beer bottle. So um, if Michael, yeah. <laughs> if Michael, if you, uh, if you're up to yet another quest, then maybe we can do a final quest. How about that? Certainly. Okay. How about we what? do a Raytheon? Oh, Raytheon. Ooh, that sounds uh, intriguing. Let's do that. Dangerous. Have Have you Have you done a Raytheon? You probably haven't done a Raytheon either, right, Michael? I have actually. You have? Yes. Oh wow! I have done a Raytheon. Oh yes. So, so uh, what was the result of doing a Raytheon? Death. Uh, your death or the Raytheon's <laughs> yes, death? Yes, <laughs> I, my death. Yeah, oh. I'm not. This is, I don't know, maybe once or twice. I don't think I've ever successfully completed it. Mm. I, you, I, I must admit, uh, Raytheon is my favorite monster of Monster Hunter so far. I mean, she's uh, she's basically like a very vanilla dragon. She's a green dragon. That's spewing fire, but I really like kind of um, the the pattern, the attack pattern she has. You know, I really um, um, know her attacks quite well. You know, it still doesn't mean that I that that uh, I'm able to avoid of the, of all the attacks. But um, but I really feel like like this is a monster that I know very very well and and I enjoy fighting again, um, fighting her for for that very reason. So. Um, Shepard, you're changing your, changing your gear. Should I put up the quest right now? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I just need to... Uh, well, this is going to be hard. I have to make... I have to barbecue something. Does anybody have any uh, rations they could give me? <laughs> I can give you some steaks. You mean steaks? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, I, I, I drank some beer because I thought that was our last quest. And, uh, uh, and I was going to equip like another... Charm, maybe perception. I don't know. I'd rather have focus, but I'm fine with the set that I have, I guess. You know, the thing I wish that this game had that uh, Monster Hunter Freedom Unite has is uh, the cat balloon. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. What's that? The, so the cat balloon. The cats are floating throughout most of uh, the areas that you're in, right? So they're they're in a blimp above everything. If uh, they're relatively close to you, you can wave at them. And they'll flash their light at you and tell you where the monster is. So it just kind of appears on screen. So, yeah, sometimes I, when I'm standing at the gate, sometimes I see a blimp in the distance. I'm just kind of hoping that, that you know that this is kind of like a cat blimp, but yeah, uh, hmm. but you know this it's, but the game doesn't have this feature. It's really useful, especially if you uh, lose a monster. Uh, like if it wanders off somewhere and you or the paintball wears off and you go to wherever it was and it's not there. Uh, if the cat balloon is above you, you can just wave and they'll say, "Oh, it's over here." It's it's uh, you know it's one of those many uh, really really charming and 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 fascinating mysteries that you know they hid in in the game and you can kind of 
I, I mean, I just um, just learned about the about, about how this works on our previous episode. Uh, so uh, for for me, you know, it's it's the game has so many so many beautiful mysteries and 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 things to discover. I mean, it's it's really uh, it's really amazing. By the way, we are talking about the future of, of gaming and how things are going, going to change in the future. Here we have a very interesting question of, of, from one of our listeners about the future of uh, Monster Hunter. It's from Goldfish Boy, and he asks us, Do you think that, Monster Hunter, that a Monster Hunter game will come out on the 3DS? Uh, seeing and hearing about its graphical and hardware capabilities, it seems like it could handle a Monster Hunter game. What are your opinions? Well, the the developer has gone out and said, uh, basically confirming that very fact that there will be a Monster Hunter on the 3DS. Gasp! Oh, yeah, wow! So uh, there you go. So it's our, basically already confirmed. I mean, you know, hinted at, but we know how that goes. So what do we think? Do you guys think it's going to be just a port of Monster Hunter Third, or will it be an entire new game like like for the Wii? Uh, it's kind of. I mean, you know, you're kind of like comparing. Uh, apples and apples when you're talking about Monster Hunter and ports. Uh, I'm sure it'll be an expansion of the uh, Tri sort of universe. It, it would kind of make sense that because it's a it's a, it's a you know, it's a system with 3D capabilities. Oh. It's Nick, ca what are you using there? Well, I, I don't know what you're using. I have a, a bone hammer. <laughs> <laughs> what? That doesn't look... <laughs> oh. I, don't, I don't know what so, you mean. Oh! Somebody was basically uh, ruined <laughs> by that. Nick, Nick brought uh, some, some Cantor fight. I think Nick brought some some uh, uh, some insanely overpowered weapons to this fight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good because I have a score to settle with this creature. Oh yeah, yeah. We we are basically going through all the monsters that that did you any harm in this game. And I appreciate taking, that. And we're taking revenge on them. Big time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and, and in addition, because I'm obviously not as skilled as you are, all of you in this game, I have leveled up twice in this playthrough tonight. So. Yes, me as well, actually. <laughs> so, so this is this is really cool. Basically, all, all, um, the other day I watched oh, wow. I, I yeah. watched a movie uh, that that came out recently. It was called um, How to Train Your Dragon or something. Yeah. Oh yes, it's, oh, it's, it's such a cute movie. That was but, totally a Naruga Kuga. Uh, I, 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 but I was I was reminded of Monster Hunter and how we are basically the evil Vikings fighting the monster. Maybe we, <laughs> maybe maybe if we stop, if we just take away our all our words, maybe maybe this Raytheon is going to to like us and maybe we can ride it. So I think uh, Nick totally did, is an evil Viking right now. <laughs> yes. did, did you did you see the amazing thing that happened there? Oh man! Okay. What, I, what, what happened? I, I knocked her out of the sky and then knocked her tail off. <laughs> that was beautiful. Was, was beautiful. I only saw the tail part. <laughs> <laughs> I just like walking behind Shepard. It's such a good view. <laughs> <laughs> it is such a safe place. <laughs> Uh, unless, unless it's a global involved. Unless it's a global, <laughs> exactly. That's what I want. <laughs> that's so sad. Oh it's no, Rathian's gotten me down. Uh oh, oh, I'm oh, okay. Uh, okay. Good night. No, okay. Good night. I got myself on the wrong side <laughs> but, of him. I'm, I'm, to I'm totally surprised that that you that you um, that you are actually quite a good hunter, Michael. Because <laughs> you you've been fighting all these monsters, which uh, some of them you never fought before. And still, you know, this is the first monster where where you where you uh, where you had any problems with. <gasps> oh wow! Okay, so there was a connection error, and and we are back in the podcast, and we are recording uh, again. <laughs> okay, so I, I flew uh, out of the game. So what what's going on? We just uh, finished. Well. I won't say we finish the Wraithian. We'll just start from here, and whatever the conversation is, I'll overlay it uh, over the rest of the quest. Okay, that, that sounds good. We'll chalk it up to the gods of the podcast for for this. <laughs> so, so yeah, I was quite surprised that that uh, Michael actually uh, actually did so well with, with us today. You know, you 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 have quite a quite a good monster hunter, Michael. <laughs> well. You guys kept me alive. We have to admit. <laughs> but on the other hand, I mean, you are a, a, a pretty good gamer. I mean, you you um, you you've been playing through entire entire um, Demon Souls, which for me is something I and I haven't achieved yet. So, so <laughs> big respect I, to you. I, I rage quit that game and <laughs> almost broke it in two. Uh, are you kidding me? <laughs> How far did you get, Nick? 
I, I died once, and then I started slowly working my way past, like, those first goblins at the gate. Okay. Uh... And I got to some point where something killed me, and I have no idea what it was. And <laughs> I just got so tired of dying hmm. that I just turned. Away. And that sounds totally like Demon Souls. <laughs> that is Demon Souls. Yeah, too. And the other thing too about that game is you. So those guys get you mad, and you you're on the edge of your seat, and then suddenly some malicious guy, a real person, enters your world and starts hunting you down. And that's when the game, to me, it it. It just goes to a whole nother level, especially if that person coming after you is particularly malicious. So yeah. this is a like a a regular player. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, that is malicious. And you just yeah. see him, and you know he's coming, and you're not quite sure where he is, and uh, then you start sensing his presence, and then you, you're just basically trying to equip yourself as best you can to prepare, hoping that you're not underpowered, and hoping that you've got enough left, you know, on you. Maybe you've gone through a couple of rough fights before he ever gets there so you might be weaker and oh it's 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 crazy yeah i mean they they stack the odds almost in your favor because uh, you know it, when you're you can only be invaded while you're in human form uh and you can also like bring up uh, two other uh friendly people to come help you but even still i mean th there are so many abilities in that game that make you more powerful when you're a phantom and when you're also uh, at low life but oftentimes they can make themselves so powerful they can get you in just one well-timed backstab, yeah. which is horrifying. I and mean, there are videos of it out there, uh, entertaining ones because it's just like there's like this one like 12 minute long video of this guy invading somebody else's world and slowly stalking him just before backstabbing him moments before he finished the level. <laughs> like, just being really cruel. That sounds malicious. But actually we were talking about this. I, I think there is a strong um, relationship uh, between uh, the gameplay of, of Monster Hunter and the gameplay of, of um, Demon's Souls. I think those two games are, are, are inherently related in the way Especially, for example, in the way uh, such trivial things like combat works, where both games are, are about, you know, uh, uh, looking for certain tells and always, you know, p planning ahead and understanding how the combo systems work. And also, you know, there are these long animations where you have to understand, you know, that certain animations take more time than others and you have to understand how, how uh, the, your animations are fitting into the animations of the enemy and stuff like that. And also, you know, yeah, both, you know, both games are difficult, you know. Yeah, and I, I love the experience of being just at the at the limit of what you're capable of doing. That you are, you you have to fight at the upper limits of your capacity mm -hmm. in order to win. And the, the, you can do this in Monster Hunter too, of course, and you can do it in Demon Souls. And I did. You you get overpowered for certain areas and you just go back and plow through them because you just want to do it just because you remember getting hurt so bad <laughs> before you want to take it out on those guys but so often in in demon souls and in this game you are working at the very limits of what you're capable of and just a few mistakes will cost you dearly that's the kind of gaming i like mm -hmm. yeah i mean because in the high end of both games uh two or three hits is all it takes to, to kill you there's no and there's no quick healing either uh, and in fact, in many ways, you're almost more vulnerable healing in Demon Souls than you are in Monster Hunter, because the, the monsters follow you no matter where you go. And mm, yeah, it, I'm like, well, that feeling too of you. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, go ahead. That that feeling of of limping off to a corner or to a safe place away from the creature just to get a potion. You know, like can I just get over here and just reach in and get this out and get it in time? Yeah, that's a, a factor in both games. Um, and then if if and sometimes you just can't manage it, and uh, it's it's terribly frustrating, but it also makes you sweat. Mm -hmm, definitely. And also this, this also this idea that that you can lose so much. You know, for example, you know there's so much at stake. I, uh, so much. Um, um, so often I've been playing Monster Hunter and I've been having this epic fight of you know 40 minutes or something. And 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 it came down to the, the very last few minutes, and I was really sweating to 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 uh, defeat the monster, or else you know this this entire forty minutes fight would, would be would be you know in vain. I would I would lose all the potions I, I used up, and would have to re-equip everything, and I would gain nothing from the entire fight. So <laughs> the, in there's a there's a Tigrex that you have to fight offline. Uh, so you're by yourself with your cat. 
and I was continually fighting this monster. Continually, I, and I could not figure out how to beat Tigrex. Mm. Uh, I was I brought in a lance. I didn't think it was good enough. I didn't know what I was doing. I brought in a hammer. Uh, that didn't work at all. And I, what I kept doing is I kept trying to keep the monster away. Uh, I was like, okay, I'm just going to run in, hit the monster a bunch, and run out. With Tigrex, he covers so much ground so fast, you're just basically... You, 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 I, I figured out you don't have a choice. You have to stand basically toe-to-toe -to -toe with him and fight him. And that was the most terrifying thing I've ever done in a Monster Hunter game. Hmm. The, that sense of accomplishment that comes with like actually defeating a difficult thing in a game... It's like it's it's weird because it's enhanced in this game. Yeah. In Demon Souls, I haven't managed to overcome anything, <laughs> so yeah. I can't talk about that. But this game. Yeah, I, you, I think you're mentioning the, the the very core. I think the very fascination of both both games. In both games, you overcome these huge challenges, which uh, seem so so daunting at first. But then you you kind of figure your way out and and you figure out how to how to defeat them, and if you do then um, the this this achievement is so much more meaningful. You have you get so much tremendous you know boost of of um, you know competence. You know you feel so competent in this world because you you actually um, you know you had troubles with this problem, but then you 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 figure out how to how to how to defeat this problem on your own, and it's so much more meaningful than than other games which. May, may give you um, all the answers to your problems, you know, um, if you just wait for it or if you, you know, in a tutorial or something like that, or maybe, you know, if you fail too often, they will, they will give you a hand, you know, to, to guide you through the experience. You know, you as a designer, you appreciate this, I would imagine, Christian, in a, a way that maybe some don't, but it, the way that a, a, a good game design um, teaches you how to, how to succeed, in this game, the, the monsters themselves teach you how to succeed. Yeah. And that is a very difficult thing to do. It's a lot easier to just make them powerful with cool animations and you just have to kill them or whatever. But there's a tricky way. There are tells and there are, you have to be patient and there are little tricks and there are things that occur randomly that, that deciphering these little puzzles that are these monsters in this particular game reveals, I think, a terrific amount of design expertise. Definitely, definitely. But on the other hand, we have to also acknowledge that it also kind of expects a very certain kind of player, a player that is willing to go through this kind of lesson, a player that is, you know, uh, that sticks around even though he, fa uh, he faces, you know, he, he experiences this, this severe punishment uh, at first. And uh, you know he's willing to take this punishment because he understands that you know this is a part of the process and that is something that he has to go through it uh, in order to improve at something. And, and it may be that that you know these kind of kinds of plays are getting rare. That you know this is kind of a thing that that was very common uh, previously. You know in the very very early games, and that may be something that is not really that that common nowadays. Uh, I I think the thing that I like is especially with Capcom, you can tell that their initial design philosophy with like Mega Man and things like that, mm -hmm. it's followed them. They've developed that. They haven't tried to innovate in some weird way, try to get their audiences more interested into games that are completely new and different. They've taken the same mechanic and have like developed that. Put more interesting things in with it. Like what would happen if Woodman, you worked him down over a period of time, like, oh, well, if I was doing this, I would be able to get past him and things like that. I think that's the thing that's been interesting about Capcom. Uh, and kind of seeing that philosophy getting out into other games. We played that Lord of Arcana last mm -hmm. week. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see what that game does. Like, is it going to hand you monster parts? Uh, how are they going to integrate? Because Square doesn't necessarily design games that are easy. Mm. Yeah, I, I well, know. more and more they're getting easier though. It's it, not like a youth. Especially if you, look, if you look at Final Fantasy XIII, which con consists of of basically corridors which you just just go through, right? So there, there suddenly they take away all all this exploration, which was such a big part of of um, you know older games. Well, yeah, I mean, it, some of the combat could be interesting. I just thought the yeah, exploration yeah. was the move. Thirteen opens up though. Like, yeah, yeah. it really does. It, you know, you're going through these corridors, these very tiny spaces, and then it just opens up and everything is everywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's one of the most unexpected things I think I saw in that game. I was really disappointed until I ended up there. Yeah, yeah. but even still, like, the, the, the designer came out and said he did that 
for a reason. Like his, his purpose was to, to do something experimental and kind of, I mean, in a way it was kind of brave in that he was saying, here's something that we think gamers might appreciate and that rather than wasting their time checking out different corridors, we'll just give everything to them like right in a one plate. Uh, and it failed, but I mean, it was it was a worthy <laughs> attempt, I guess. <laughs> well, it's, it's this noble attempt to to, to, yeah. to try something very risky and, and it's especially such a large in, in game. Such, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, uh, you, enormous budget. I, I don't know what the budget is, but I'm sure it's been bigger than any game they've ever produced before, uh, or at least will be until they release Final Fantasy 15. <laughs> I don't know how much 14 has cost them, but I'm sure that was a lot too. Oh God, 14. But we won't oh. talk about that. No, we won't get oh, no. on our own time, Nick. We'll, we'll get into what you think about that because I know you have experience in that room. <laughs> By the way, are you still guys still fighting, fighting the Raytheon? Oh no, we're, we've been back for a while. Uh, it's yeah, just that there's a, a rando in here. Oh, there's, yeah, there's, there's a person a, preventing uh, me from. Uh-huh. Oh, should we ask him to leave? I mean, he was pretty excited that he's in the podcast. Yeah, his name is Serene. And uh, I'm sure. Well, we're pretty much we're pretty much finished, though, right, Christian? I, I guess so. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's so late for you, Christian, and we're getting to the about almost an hour and a half mark. And I know we have a rule about podcasts; it has to be like between an, uh, 45 minutes and like an hour and a half. I think an hour and a half is like the upper limit. So we are reaching our upper limit, and people on, on the <laughs> on the YouTube are probably at at this moment are thinking, why am I look, listening to this very very long video on, on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> this is the longest video I've ever watched on YouTube. <laughs> there were some pretty amazed people when they saw my videos were going over an hour. They're like, this is the longest video ever. And it's just a, it's a new development. YouTube has allowed uh, certain uh, more active uh, producers of videos. They can upload uh, any length video they want as long as it's under four gigabytes. That's just crazy. So, this is crazy. So uh, I, have, I have no real limitations uh, Christian, uh, you, you used to comment on my self-imposed time limits that were always uh, revolved around YouTube's time limits. So yeah. I, I originally said, you know, I must beat this monster in under 11 minutes because uh, YouTube only allowed 10 minutes and 59 seconds. Uh, yeah. Likewise, they then increased it to 15 minutes and 30 seconds. So I'm like, oh, I got a little bit more breathing room here. But usually uh, whenever I had that, it was just more of me running around and, and less of me uh, actually fighting the monster. And now that it's completely up, um, I show everything. There's there's no cuts at all. Uh, the only thing I cut out is I cut out some loading times, and so you get full Shepard all the time. We're showing <laughs> yeah. it all. We're doing it live. We're, we're doing it live. We're doing it live, even if if, yeah. you, if you die. Even well, you know, there's no there's no going back. I mean, we've got a podcast we got to put out there, and uh, you know, everyone dies every once in a while. I mean, I've never said that I'm I'm a perfect player. I mean, there are players out there. Uh, I don't know how many takes it took them but you'll see them fighting monsters without taking any hits at all so uh there are those people on youtube uh, i am not one of them uh, i usually don't die but um I, I get hit all the time so there you go <laughs> that's okay i think everybody got got uh, especially our, 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 our listeners got got what they were expecting from, from the well only because it was today. like the end of the quest it was already <laughs> beaten i was just like dropping a second uh unnecessary trap right in front of the global so it was, but can I? Did he land in the trap that I set? I, we know I, I probably got killed before it got set, didn't it? Uh, I don't know. We have to we have to go back and do a replay. Gotta go back to the footage. Well, I won't be able to see the footage because I was dead. <laughs> Well, um, I, I think we have to um, put this um, put this uh, episode uh, to, to a close. Uh, sadly, because I would be able to uh, to podcast with you guys, you know, the entire night, especially when when Michael's on, uh, with us on board. Because I I, I mean, I, this discussion I think today was was really amazing. I was really enjoying it a lot. I mean, you're well, welcome back that... anytime you want, Michael. Yes, I mean, definitely. This, this yeah. has been thank great. you, thank you, and I appreciate you guys. You know, I'm. I, like I said, I'm not quite in your league as a player, and I appreciate you kind of uh, helping me react, reacclimate to the game. We were talking before the podcast. I was really into this game for a while, and it's been months and months since I played it. And I mean, get, ramping myself back up to prepare, I, I just didn't realize how much of it slipped through my fingers. I really had to learn how to use the controller again. <laughs> uh, so I appreciate your help. Oh well, you definitely. I think you've shown that that you're definitely up to the task, um, and <laughs> and that's what I always enjoy um, about the block your book as well, because you know you're such an experienced gamer, but as well, but you but you're also commenting on on the, the games in a very very interesting and very inspiring fashion. By the way, um, uh, I think a lot of the, our listeners are not really familiar with your stuff. So where they, can they find you? Uh, just come to brainygamer.com. 
And uh, you can also come to vintagegameclub.org. Those are the two things that I do, I guess, most often. I also write a column periodically for um, Game Set Watch or Gamma Sutra. Um, and if anybody happens to be going to the Game Developers Conference uh, after the new year, and I'll be there and let's chat about games. Oh, of course. So, um, well, thank you for, for being with us today, Michael. It was really, really a great pleasure. And also thank you for, uh, for to our, all our listeners who sent in questions. Uh, please do keep them coming. And if you want to get in touch with us, you can uh, simply write us an email to monsterhuntercast at googlemail.com. And also you can go on our Tumblr blog, uh, which is monsterhunterpodcast.tumblr.com uh, to uh, write us an, uh, uh, a message. You can also, um, f of course, comment on the YouTube video on uh, Shepard's uh, channel. Um, I think the next episode will be uh, next Friday. Is that true, guys? Uh, yeah, that's no problem. I mean, I don't think there's anything keeping us from doing that, right? Okay, uh, if we are going to do it next Friday, then I might be able to, uh, to we might be able to do some, some very, very exciting uh, special feature. Uh, but this is going to be a surprise, so, you, uh, so our listeners uh, can look forward to something very, very exciting Monster Hunter related. Well, I'm pretty excited about that too. Oh, I, I don't know what it is, but I'm excited. It's, it's, going, it's <laughs> going to it's going to be a surprise. It's going to be amazing. So uh, we wish you a good good luck. Uh, we wish you a good hunt, and remember, please don't tell anyone anyone I hacked my Wii. <laughs> oh man uh well i don't think they know your special code so i think you're in luck oh yes <laughs> Ooh, i dodged that thing but but just to be sure just you know maybe we can censor something out <laughs> <laughs>